Hello, I'm Adam Hurry and welcome back to Football Clichés, the podcast about the language of football. Once again, this is Mesut Harlan Dix, in which our special guest chooses three tiny things they love about football and three equally obscure things they hate about it. This week I was joined by Sky Sports and BBC Radio 5 Live's Kelly Cates. You can listen to the full show and all the other episodes wherever you get your podcasts and you can find them ad-free on The Athletic app. Brought to your eyes and ears by The Athletic, this is Football Clichés. On to the main event. This is this is going to be Mesut Harland Dix. Um, this is the footballing love and hates of Kelly Cates. Um, your suggestions this week were a fascinating um, little selection <laughs> box. I'm looking forward to these. Um, tell, tell us about tell the first why, thing. Tell me afterwards why you find them fascinating because then we won't we won't do any spoilers in case anybody's (laughs) desperately excited about all of this well the the fascination uh, lies within let's find out tell us about the first thing that you you love or just simply find oddly charming about football oh no it's not oddly charming I absolutely love this and I have to put all kinds of safety disclaimers on it and I realize that I you know I I don't want to encourage people to do this (laughs) But I absolutely, with all my heart and every fiber of my being, love pyro. I think <laughs> it's amazing. I think you see a flare go off. And the, the, all the all the kind of caveats that it's dangerous, I know. Mm-hmm. I know that. Lots of things are dangerous. It doesn't mean I don't want to see them. And no. this is one of them. I just it reminds me of um reminds me of like big European nights. You know, when yeah. you see a way end in like Turkey or somewhere and they're just exactly, yeah. like a huge smoke bomb. It's fantastic. When you see buses coming down the, the road and the fans are all out there holding flares in their hands. Mm. Like, that's the kind of dedication. They kind of disregard for their own safety. <laughs> that kind of over you know, overcome with emotion kind of lack of sense that I like to see. And I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, I appreciate that it's not responsible of me, but I, I don't care about other people's safety. Okay, I have some very niche objections to this, but Charlie, can we hear your views on this first? Are, are you a pyro man? I want, well, I remember hearing the chant, no pyro, no party. And I yes. imagine, Kelly, you're a big, big advocate. Big proponent, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've lobbied hard for that over the years. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I definitely was taken with, with Kelly's passion there. I, I, I've never myself been a huge pyromaniac or however you want to kind of, <laughs> how, you, how you describe yourself but it was certainly fun I mean I heard no pyro no party um what's the team called it's one of those the non one of the non-league teams um I went and saw them years ago and it was really really fun and, and they were really into their pyro mm. um it, it, it certainly makes a spectacle um mm. and I know what you mean about health and safety don't don't try this at home kids but yeah should we do retro pyro then should we say that in we like we like looking at old footage of pyrotechnics. No, that sounds even more weird. And by the way, <laughs> no, because because like if then we're not telling people to do it in the future. By the way, by pyro, I don't mean those kind of fireworks that go off the pitch at Wembley when there's a no, big game. No, 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 that leaves me. I mean, it's nice and everything, and and you know they do a very good job of it. But it's it, I, I don't get the same emotional reaction. So we have you down as like pyro historian. Is 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 that cooler? Because I don't think it is. <laughs> pyro historian. Jesus. Pyro <laughs> connoisseur. I mean, <laughs> Kelly, as you said, I mean, the image that it, it gives you is kind of away European ties in Turkey yeah. or Greece or something like that. But this is this is perhaps my slight objection. Can you see English fans pulling this off on a regular basis? Is it a fairly convincing sight? Because if we're going to be doing pyro over here, do we need the guy who stands on the on the advertising hoarding with his back to play, sort of coordinating chance with his megaphone we need that guy too no, we do we do have pyro here but usually it's like one or two flares going off mm. in a in a in a corner i think fans are quite um rigorously frisked before they come into game uh <laughs> to come into games i don't know if that's still the case during COVID. i never asked that question with fans coming back how rigorously are they frisked um but yeah i think i think there's um we do do it here but it, not quite to the the same the Is- same level is there a threshold, do you think, for the type of game that deserves pyro? I mean, I mean, like the Saturday no. twelve thirty. I, I can't see pyro there. You can't. But it have could that. only it could only improve it. It could only <laughs> improve it. If you're sitting there, there's a nil nil draw where the players all look half asleep. The crowd haven't woken up. They're all still hung over from Friday night. I'm talking about the crowd rather than the players. And then suddenly, some kind of scuffed goal <laughs> dribbles across the line, and all of a sudden, there's five massive flares in the away end. That would be fantastic. I do not condone this officially. <laughs> no, that's fine. That We've made that amazing. clear. That would yeah. be amazing. 
But what about just, VAR? It left we it. have to we have to put this into the equation. What if you let your flare off too early? Well, that's yeah, that's that's often a problem. <laughs> <laughs> We're not making a clip sure. out of that one. No, definitely not. Premature um, fire. I don't know if there, yeah, there's anything you can do about that. Mm. Um, yeah, never, never, never go too early when you're lighting your own flame. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely right. Um, <laughs> I think we've 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 extinguished every every possible um, emotion we can have out of out of pyro. There, tell us about your your second rather sensual love of football. <laughs> well, well, to be honest, it, it does kind of um, follow on from the pyro thing as well because one of the other things I love about <laughs> making myself sound like some yep. kind of psychopath it should be on a register but um, mm -hmm. i love the smell of the pyro <laughs> i love that kind of burnt smell and the and the fog that it leaves around the ground we see it at the moment um during covid you don't really want it around anybody with breathing issues but um <laughs> the, the, the one that I, <laughs> the smell that I do love um and that really it's it's the most um you know they say that part of your brain that um that senses smell is next to the part of your brain that memory. The one that is the, the most deeply embedded in me is that smell of turf and deep heat. Mm. It just mm. that from from before I even knew what the smell, you know, could distinguish the smells or whatever. Because I've been going to the game since I was two. And so I, I don't even remember the first game I went to, but that smell will always, always be football to me. And the, it, I can, even when I smell it, I can hear the clatter of like old boots mm. on a hard surface mm. and that kind of, it just, when, when I smell that, it brings all my other senses kind of flooding back. And I, I just love it. And, it, it, and the, the interesting thing is, it hasn't, it's one of the few things that hasn't changed mm. and is almost exactly the same at grassroots and at elite level mm. football. Exactly right. Charlie, this is this is quite a universal thing. But when you get down to sort of Sunday league level and you're talking about mud and, and deep heat, it's you're getting into a stage where you're kind of romanticizing thing, romanticizing things that are essentially inconveniences, bad pitches <laughs> and being cold. That's not something to evoke. <laughs> this leads me on to um, a, a lovely clip from the weekend um, from a very likely suspect. This was Neil Warnock complaining of the substandard facilities at Stokes, um, I can say Britannia Stadium, I mean the Bet365, of course, uh, which, which really did evoke um, the inconveniences of Sunday League. The, the facilities that we've got changing was an absolute disgrace today. I want to put animals in it. You know, the, the toilets were blocked up. They've got fumes coming in from a bloody engine outside the dressing room. Water everywhere on the floor. It's a disgrace for the championship. Absolute disgrace. I hope we do the same when we play them up at our place, rather than give them the comfortable... We weren't even uh, social distancing where we were in, in these cabins, what they put in. We might as well have been in the dressing room. You know, we're too nice us up there. Kelly, that's, that's proper football man Neil Warnock, who clearly doesn't share your love of the down and dirty sensations of football. Mm, well, he didn't love it on this occasion, but I would mm. be surprised if Neil Warnock hadn't managed at places where they did make their opponents change in slightly less glamorous locations. So, I, yeah, I think, I think sometimes Neil Warnock likes things when they go for him and doesn't like them when they go against him. And I don't, I don't think I'm you know, breaking any barriers by saying this. <laughs> no, I think, mm -hmm. I, I think you're, you're probably about right. Um, Interesting, interesting point he made at the start of that clip where he said he wouldn't have put animals in it, um, which, uh, which uh, intersected very nicely with this quote from Jose Mourinho this weekend, Charlie. We have two arguably world-class players and finishers in Son and Kane. Not only talked to us of world-class individually, in fact, combining a world-class combustion. And uh, working like animals, with all the respect for animals. I love animals, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Uh, but working amazing <laughs> hard when the team didn't have the ball. What a bizarre clarification to make. <laughs> I just love that. No disrespect to animals. I love animals. A lot of my best friends are animals. To animals. Yeah. This is a new social media friendly Jose, isn't it? He's terrified he's going to get cancelled. He's seen the dark side of Instagram when he's trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. And now he's mm. thinking, oh, my God, people are going Lots to of... I've said I've said something bad about animals. He doesn't Lots want of animals are going case. to unfollow him. Yeah. Yeah. Jose Marino hits back in Peta Row. That will be that will be next week. I really look forward to that. Anyway, There's huge Peta billboards all over London, all over North yeah. London, with big X's over Jose Marino's face. Um, a badger throwing their season ticket at him in the dugout. Um, anyway, Kelly, tell us about your third love of football. Um, undeserved wins. <laughs> Teams that have been mm -hmm. absolutely pinned to the wall for the whole game and then somehow get a scrappy corner 
at the end. And then somebody goes up who shouldn't have taken it. Somebody else, the goalkeeper piles forward and, and they take all three points. And I, I can't decide which I love more, which is that kind of hysterical sort of, almost like almost like hysterical laughter sort of celebrating the players who know full well exactly what they've got away for or the or the disgust and that mm. disbelief on the on the opposition's faces i just love it i think it's i i just think it's um it's part of why we watch because that can always happen and it's mm. that and it, it is it's that celebrating and as as players run off and they don't do any kind of um you know choreographed celebration or anything like that they're just trying not to like cry laughing and it's brilliant i love it um there is a technical point to be made here charlie um listener callum slater writes in and says i've just heard an 18th minute goal inexplicably described as smash and grab i was shocked he says now when it comes to smash and grab which i guess is the phenomenon we're talking about here um, smash and grab is the is the entire game itself, like the act of going in, taking what you need, which is mm. the points, and then going away. You can't have an individual goal as a smash and grab. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, although I feel you do hear that from Comfort. You know, a team will take the lead, and it will be a kind of smash and grab. It may be um, yeah. whether that's uh, whether that should be allowed. I can only report on what I'm hearing. <laughs> um, but Kelly. The, I mean, even now, I mean, we've all we've all experienced an undeserved win one way or the other. But there seems to be kind of reluctance, even among sort of pundits and journalists and general observers, to use the word lucky as if it's some sort of as if a team could never be lucky. There's always there's always a kind of marginal gains genius lying behind there somewhere. I'm I'm talking quite often about the Mourinho masterclass idea, which I'm not saying his undeserved wins are necessarily against his design, but it seems like the word lucky well, is kind of a I swear word. I think that's slightly different. Yeah, but I think that's slightly different, the Mourinho mm. thing, because I think okay. that is that is how he plays and that, you know, it is all about percentages and all those kind of things. But not offending I, animals. And, not, <laughs> and, being, and being kind to animals. And, being you know, standing up, yeah, respecting animals. Stand, standing <laughs> petter petitions. Um, but, the, but I do think there were... What what I mean by an undeserved win is mm. when a team really like you know when somebody's missed a load of chances. It's just when things have hit the bar and they you know not, or they've not got a decision that you know or they've had a decision go against them or whatever it is. And you just look and you think one of those games where you spend the whole thing thinking why is one team not four or five nil up in this, mm. and then the opposition get a, a goal in like the last minute to just so like a punch's chance like the, the one oh, punch it, potential. Yeah, it, Exactly that. Exactly that. Let's move on to the things that you hate or perhaps just have a slightly irrational, tiny aversion to. Uh, tell us about your first one. This is great. No, I, I hate all of them. Um, the first one <laughs> is the first one I hate in life and in football as well, which is people using nicknames when they don't know the person they're talking about. It right. drives me up the wall. It, but, whether it's a, like a party where you get introduced to a group of people one of them has a nickname for the other one. And then the person who's desperate to be included suddenly goes, oh yeah, yeah, hello, whatever your name is, Billy. And you're like, hey, not, he's not Billy to you. You don't know him. You're not part of that whole kind of set. Stop trying so hard to fit in. Just relax and back off. And then- the, <laughs> in the, in Sky Sports Christmas point, parties uh, revealed. Um, <laughs> terrible. I can't imagine who that they are people, They're people that I know and who know me. And so then it, it works. Mm. But then it's that, it's just that sense of, um, it's a, it's a, it has a, a whiff of desperation about it. And mm. when people use it in a footballing sense, the, the worst um, hit person in all of this is Frank Lampard. Everybody, <laughs> everybody but everybody calls him Lamps. Mm. David Beckham's like Bex, Lamps. I mean, maybe it's just that generation of players. And it drives me up the wall. Stephen Gerrard, Stevie G. And it, mm. it is that generation of players. And it's that sense of, yeah, they're, they're one of us. It's like, they're not, you don't know them. Unless you actually played with them or a close friend of theirs, stop <laughs> using their nicknames. It just sounds sad and try hard. Okay, so my question <laughs> for you then, Katie, is um, <laughs> Katie. <laughs> does, this, does this phenomenon kind of extend to um, when fans refer to the players of the team by their first names? That's over. That's overly oh, familiar. No, I'm thinking... I there, there is an exception, you're right, and it's not that one. <laughs> the exception right. is when it's a nickname that has been invented by the fans for the player. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's okay. so that's a, that's an exception. But okay. when Can it's something that they go, uh, no. <laughs> 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 but there, but there are there are there are some of them. Um, say um, uh, 
the, Scot the Scotland player who Norwich fans call the mayor, John Fleck. Oh, so right. they, I'm sure you'll call him the mayor of Norwich. That's fine. Okay. That that is absolutely fine. That that does not come under this umbrella. What I mean is, play uh, fans and worse commentators and pundits who are professionals and should know better <laughs> using nicknames to describe a player who they don't know. Different if it's a friend. That will that's an example because it's very difficult to change that around. I you think. would love Kelly. There are a couple of uh, Tottenham examples. So some um, kind of fans who Sonny. <laughs> so Sonny's one, but mo yeah. but more egregious. I think you would think some. So people who Deli Ali's close friends and family call him Del. Right. But some fans will take it upon themselves to also call him Del as if they know him. And likewise, Harry Kane is known as H by those that are close to him. But yeah. again, some some fans will will call him H. I'm guessing you would you would not be up for H or Del in those contexts. No, no absolutely not. That's what you call your mates. That you shorten your mates' names. Um, it's not it's not John Fleck. I don't want to talk. It's Kenny McLean is the guy they call the, the mayor of Norwich. Uh -huh, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. So sort of creative but, um, nicknames are allowed, and I think that's fair because that, there's ownership there. They own it. They've they've given it to him, and therefore they are entitled to yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. One size exactly. fits all, for example. Yes. Exactly that. But I think that was that a friend's. I don't know. But they. But it just. It, it's um, it's trying too hard. It's like it's it's, it's a bit like fans who think they're one of the team. You're not. You know, you may be part of a broader <laughs> issue in the club, you're, but you're not a player. You're part of the, yeah. You're just not. <laughs> it's like, it's not, this isn't, you, but the reaction from both of you is kind of, it, is part of it because it's like, there's a, oh, what do you mean they're not part of the team? It, but it, they're not. It, this isn't, this is no, factual oh, rather agree. than, that emotionally they may be part of something bigger and, you know, mm. we're all in this together and that kind of thing. I, that I, I have no issue with. But that sense of thinking that thinking that you're one of them, you're you're not. Calling Sterling, <laughs> this, this calling right. Sterling Raz. Yeah, I mean, Charlie, this this I, th I think North London is a very good case study for this because it. I mean, going go, calling players by their first name, I honestly think has been a bit of an Arsenal phenomenon over the last ten to fifteen years, and now I think Spurs are starting to do it. You see a lot of Toby. I mean, it's not a particularly difficult surname to pronounce. I mean, I know that the bar is low for supposedly difficult to pronounce surnames in football, but to Toby, it's not for me. Is it for you? Toby, Toby and Jan, you, they would often be, uh, be grouped together. Mm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, and, and yeah, Arsenal players often, and like I say, H and Dell, you know, it's, 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 uh, it, it's, it's getting out of control. But yeah, Kelly, you'd like my wife, Kelly, because she she's so far the other way. She's really reluctant to call, even people who are known almost universally by a kind of surname plus Y. Yeah. She'll be like, I don't, I don't really feel I know them enough. But no, no, I that's called Righty Ian thinks. for about a year. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. I did because I was just I was like yeah. I, I don't I don't really feel I don't really feel we know each other yeah. well enough to use your nickname. I can't just imagine really calling him Ian. Just just yeah. Ian. He's not an Ian, is he? No. no. That you don't as <laughs> an Ian. But you know, I think about it. If I met him and I never have, I mean, and, and if I just called him Righty, now I would stop and say, I don't, I don't, I haven't earned the right, <laughs> yeah. quite literally, I think, to call him I Righty. I think it might be, I think it might be my own sort of insecurities coming to the fore here. It's like, am I part of your group? <laughs> I don't, don't call them insecurities. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You, yeah. you hate everybody. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, again, that's a sign of major insecurities. I would, I would say foibles and quirks. <laughs> okay. extreme, yeah, that's, that's more extreme politeness <laughs> yeah with all and due Kelly, respect it... to humans <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love exactly. humans I don't I love, love humans I'm a complete misanthropist <laughs> Kelly what what do people do this with you and does that uh, is this from first experience first hand experience no they no they don't really you get like Kelly or like maybe Kel but not but very rarely straight away mm. and the, uh, there is the occasional Katesy but you, again from people who I know so it doesn't really. It doesn't. You can't really have your married me. name turned into a nickname, and that, that doesn't work, does it? That you see now. That's an interesting phenomenon. I find it very odd because mm. that 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 isn't. I don't know. Maybe it's because it doesn't feel like my name, but I I still answer to it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not to say that if somebody were to shorten my name, then I would take umbrage and refuse to speak to them, and, them. You know, <laughs> and forever hold a grudge there is precisely one athletic employee whose whose name will go unspoken who just calls me hurry all the time and I, i'm waiting for the opportunity i'm not sure by which medium yet to um do it here maybe i will Help them. 
No, I just, whoever it is, and if you are listening and you kind of duty bound to be, stop doing it. Stop it. What, anyway. Also, Adam, I, I always wonder for you, how do you feel when there, there are some of our colleagues as well who just call you cliches? Mm. How, how, how do you feel about that? I, I mean, I, I dislike it on many levels, but I, I don't like being reduced to this. I don't like being mm. reduced to this brand. I don't, I'm, mm. I'm not keen on that, anyway, but um, that's as much as I want to talk about it for that exact reason. So um, <laughs> let's move on. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated by the phenomenon of this second hatred of yours. Um, and there are some obvious candidates to pin it on, but uh, let's hear it. It's quite specific, though. So I hate um, people who get angry about the greatest, mm. the greatest footballer, the greatest goal scorer, the greatest whatever. It's nonsense. It is absolutely meaningless. That is not to say you can't have a favourite, but what, mm. what I think it smacks of is that um, it, it's someone who wants to distance themselves from kind of what they see as quite childish in having my favourite footballer, which they think might be a little bit playground. And mm. instead, they are so absolutely <laughs> certain of their own opinion and so absolutely determined that everyone else should think like they do, that they unequivocally say, no, that person is the greatest. It's like, no, that person is your favourite. And that's absolutely fine to have a favourite. That is mm. normal. But you can't then extrapolate a favourite to that player being the greatest of all time. Yours is not the only opinion. Charlie, this, this kind of debate, if it, if it could be called can, such... Can I also just put a disclaimer there, which is th this whole um, section is very much <laughs> me giving my opinion as though it is the only opinion. So yeah, I do appreciate exactly. the irony here. Um, yeah, you haven't said these are the three worst things in football, though. You haven't been that, you haven't been that um, well, decisive about that. it. But, um, Charlie, this kind of issue came to a head this week, I suppose, quite naturally, when uh, Messi and Ronaldo shared a football pitch, um, which is the cue for all of us to go, who's the best? And um, I have you down as a, I firmly have you down as a, can't we just enjoy them while we can kind of guy? <laughs> Well, I might have had that opinion however many years ago, but now you can't have you can't have that opinion either. That's no. kind of the, the, the worst. Um, but no, I am generally a uh, not feeling too strongly about debates where we are meant to have uh, a strong view on. So I don't feel I particularly don't, strongly I don't mind. That. I don't mind the debates because I like the opportunity to talk about greatness. It, there was a lot of it around when, when Maradona died as well and mm. comparing players of different generations, which is absolutely impossible. Mm. You just can't see enough for a start of players of, of previous generations. Who was greater, Pele or Maradona? You might have a favourite. You might have somebody that you are drawn to, that you appreciate what they did. And, 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 and the Maradona thing also brought up another aspect of this which is particularly distasteful which is the use of numbers to try and justify your reason mm. for liking somebody jeffrey archer sold about <laughs> 300 million copies of his books did james <laughs> joyce sell that many copies no he did not is ulysses better than anything written by jeffrey archer yes it is have i read ulysses no i have not because it's unfathomable but that's not <laughs> the point the point is that greatness is not measured in numbers you can sometimes use numbers to help your point or back up your point or to show something that's a little bit interesting or a quirk but but football is not defined in numbers maradona did what he did over what seven or eight years but he said every seven years of my every year of my life is seven years of, of someone else's mm -hmm. what he crammed into that space was so extraordinary that there's a really strong, if somebody says he's the greatest player I ever saw, who are you to tell them they're wrong? Why is your opinion more valid than, than theirs? It, it's just not, it's the way in which it's measured is flawed as well. The, the whole, I, I'm getting myself annoyed here. <laughs> I think, Kelly, you, you, you tap in something that I've thought about a lot before, which is I, I think with sport, uh, you have chemistry with certain players as an individual. You connect on an individual level and that is really important. And that is why, you know, some players leave you feeling a bit numb, feeling, leave you feeling a bit cold. And as you say, that doesn't mean you should then be making an argument that they are worse or they're bad. It is just, a, it's such a person, watching sport is such a personal thing yeah. and you see it all the time. There are players you just don't connect with for whatever reason. And there are others that just get you. There's something relatable about them. Um, and I think that is, that is a really important distinction and, and people, yeah, maybe get confused and think then they have to make the argument they are the greatest or they're better and they're not. They're just, you You connect with them and that's great. They're your favourite. Exactly. It's like when I, when I watch Ronaldo or when I watch Messi, when I watch Ronaldo, I sort of sit back and clap and go, oh, that's impressive. When I watch Messi, I smile and I laugh mm. and I just kind of, mm. it's, it's, there's a joy to it that is, it is separate 
from, totally. from how brilliant he is. And it, it is, you're right. It's a completely emotional reaction. And it's personal to me. That doesn't mean, I don't think there's a valid argument that Ronaldo is better or more effective or whatever you want to say. I, I, it, it's just to dismiss other people's opinions by saying, it, it, it's actually, I think you'll find he's the greatest player who ever played because his numbers are great. It's, that is just nonsense. Uh, actually, I think you find he, uh, he, he, you know, he, he turned around a number of games in which they wouldn't have won it because his, uh, the XG changed from when he came. Out from, <laughs> I knew you know, XG was coming. Seven, I knew it, yeah, XG. No, you can see XG. The, the thing is, that this is not a dismissal of stats as well, which are extremely useful. But they're they're a tool. They're not the point of the game. Otherwise, you might as well just have penalty shootouts. Mm. If it's not, if it doesn't come down to skill and flair and excitement and joy and love. Have a penalty shootout and just decide it that way. I think um, specifically the, 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 the utility of... I'm not of, crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, so emotional. Well, Han- well, Matt Hancock <laughs> moment here. Yeah, I mean, um, genuinely not that bad. Um, the futility of kind of comparing um, players across generations um, reminds me of a previous episode we did where we tried to decide how far back in history you'd have to go to be able to play professional football. And uh, the consensus was you could go back to about the 40s and just about get away with it. Um, uh, there was some blowback on that from listeners. But um, but yeah, I think it laid bare the idea that you just simply can't compare uh, a player who played before the pass back rule to someone who's playing now because it is quite literally a different sport. The very um, best players, I don't think that's true of them though. I think it, because they because the assumption is that they would have been as fit and as well coached if they were playing. Oh, no, now. no, no, you there can't have that. No, no, no. I mean, this is these are the technical good. issues you have to bear in mind. Are, are they having the same training methods? That's when it gets very boring. I have to say the conversation, the episode got <laughs> downhill from there. Anyway, so um, taking it in that direction, then. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we let's hear your third and final hatred of football. Um, <laughs> I in the running order for this, I simply wrote underneath feels harsh, but let's hear her out. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the use of the word beloved i think right. it smacks of it smacks of insincerity uh, in, in, I, i'm and totally it, with you here kelly yes give me the context my, my beloved, beloved gooners oh, my beloved oh my gooners God. you know they don't like them one it's bit it's a politician's bio that's what it is 100 percent. oh my i can't stand it or it's it's an intro to a football guest on a light entertainment show it's oh, that kind right. of it, it's it's something said by people who don't know or like football about people who do like football. It, it's no. it's weird language. I mean, his, his, it also feels his, like yeah. something you'd say after someone died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> D- dearly beloved. Yeah. Spent many a weekend down at their beloved Leighton Orient. Yeah. Yes, there, it's exactly there, that. And it, there was a guy, a phony like this, who. I remember saying he lived in America and he was like, yeah, I, I always, you know, every Saturday afternoon, I look out for my beloved, the, my beloved Gooners and their results. And I was like, well, it wouldn't be the afternoon where you were, pal, living in New York. Because I like, busted. <laughs> yeah. I knew also, you were we, insincere, we saw right beloved. Through you, the, yes, the minute you said beloved, I think. I've beloved plus you. Gooners, no yeah. chance. What about- I, do, I do. I mean, I know he's American, so it's not his second language, but I would make exceptions for people who English is their second language using the word beloved because they may have heard it in a footballing context and think that is a quote. So, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a harsh but fair judge, I like to think. Okay, so that's about 7.9 billion people ruled out the equation, so that's all right. They're, <laughs> they're safe. Um, what about, you know, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today? That's Is that still sacred? I mean, it's used less often in football, I think, though. Yes, I heard that. The stadium announcer. In a footballing context. Yeah, please welcome to the pitch, your beloved. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but I That's remember, Kelly, I, I, I did once have to, I used the word beloved in an article and I hated myself, but it, I did sure need I a kind it. of shorthand to describe how this guy, you know, talking about his belo- beloved Man City or whatever it was, and it, and it was kind of, I just needed to use it in that context mm-hmm. to save words as well, but I did, I hated myself. Well, there's, there's <laughs> two important technical points here. Firstly... There is no alternative, as Charlie has pointed out. I can't think of another way of, if you wanted to sort of very, very succinctly sum up the fact that this guy Mm. supported this team very much, I can't think of a different way of saying it. And secondly, it's only for one person. A collective can't have a beloved club. Is that fair to say? No, 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 no. no, no. You could go to like a a supporters club where they watch their beloved, I don't know. You think? Late Orient. Yeah. Yeah. The, okay. the game, uh, because of because of COVID restrictions, the 40,000, 40, because of COVID restrictions, 400 Leighton Orient fans watched their beloved team play. Yeah, you could you, you could do that. 
that would definitely mm. be used. I mean, again, I, I don't like it at all, but that it could be stretched to to that use. I think seems <laughs> a very appropriate word to have for something you hate, um, yeah. but that's that's <laughs> fine. Um, what a wonderful selection of things you've offered us today. Um, it's opened so many more Pandora's boxes than I ever thought, um, especially the word beloved. I, I, I never thought that such an innocuous word could piss someone off so much. But don't you don't you read it and think fraud? That's totally. what I think <laughs> when I read that, That's, that's and, what I mean. That's, then, that, that's why I felt bad using it in an article, because I was like, I'm making this guy sound like a phony. To <laughs> me, me saying his beloved Man City makes me think he's a phony. And I feel bad for him that I've done that, but I just don't have an alternative. I, 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 I would I agree know, that I it's perhaps know somebody who's overused... used it about themselves. And, and she, oh, and, I feel, yeah. and I now feel bad that I'm having a go at something that I know a friend of mine has used. What I would say though- <laughs> I feel like I you're torching that, a lot of I, relationships. I, I don't think, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I don't think, that you are a fraud if you use the word beloved, but my position on you is that I'm, I, you're gonna have to prove that you're not if you use that word. Uh, actually, there's a very interesting point. The, the idea that you said that you, you can't use beloved for yourself, which opens up a whole different can of footballing worms about things that players stroke managers should never be able to use um, for themselves. Uh, hot off the press from a Leicester press conference this afternoon, Mark Albrighton talking about Leicester's prospects in the uh, Europa League this season. He says, we have that chance to create something special and book our place further into Leicester folklore. You can't, you can't book yourself into folklore. That's not your doing. You can't no. do it. No, that's for, that's, for, that's for history books to decide. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you, can, you can write yourself into the history books, but you can't declare the fact that you have written yourself into the history books. No, you can't also call yourself a player's player. <laughs> It's like those people who describe themselves, I'm a real people person. Like, yeah, or on exactly. Towie when they say, I'm, I'm a girl's girl. I'm a yeah. girl's girl. Yeah. 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 yeah, red flag all over the place. But imagine no, a player coming can... out afterwards and saying, you know, I mean, I appreciate I'm not maybe not the most spectacular player on the, on the pitch, but I'm, I'm more of a player's player. Yeah. You, have to be a real, you have to be a real connoisseur to really get me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The players, my teammates know how good I am, trust yeah. me. <laughs> they, know, they know when I'm missing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's taken us the best part of an hour to get Mark Albrighton oh, and Towie into the same section of this show, so I'm <laughs> glad we've done that. Um, Kelly, I feel, like you, I feel like you've unloaded a lot here. From, <laughs> from pyro to nickname, unnecessary nicknames. Um, but yeah. Thanks very no, much. No, 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 not unnecessary, unearned nicknames. Oh yeah, yeah. The, oh, the, unearned, okay. the unearned usage of nicknames. Very okay, specific. unwarranted nicknames, usage. Okay, be important that we get that point clear. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's, it's been a genuine pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. I've, um, I've learned a enjoyed lot. it, thank you. Yes, I've learned a lot here about you and uh, the way you treat people. <laughs> <laughs> what's going Secretly. on behind, what's going on in my head yeah how I yeah. think about people yeah judging them all the time. Thanks very much for tuning into Football Clichés this week. You can find the full show in all the usual places and on the Athletic app ad-free every Thursday. For the latest subscription offer just go to theathletic.com forward slash clichés pod. See you next week.